Let's go back to this simple project. We created the first simple solid based on a simple sketch and now I will move on to editing this sketch. I expand the pad operation and double click the left mouse button on the sketch I want to edit. Here, in this case, it is worth noting one thing. This rectangle is dimensioned. We have certain degrees of freedom eliminated regarding the dimensions of this rectangle, but we have not eliminated the degrees of freedom regarding the position of this rectangle. I can freely change the position of this rectangle in the working area. As for the degrees of freedom, we have the number of degrees of freedom here. If you click in this spot, the degrees of freedom will be highlighted in the working area. We have information here that the geometry is not fully constrained. When creating 2D geometry, on the basis of which we create 3D solids, it is worth striving to ensure that this geometry is fully constrained, meaning we aim to remove all degrees of freedom. Of course, if we do not do this, it is not a mistake. In the case of simple geometries, this may not matter much, but in the case of somewhat more complex geometries, if these geometries are not fully constrained, we may accidentally damage the sketch. This may affect the later stages of design, especially if we are designing a part in several or a dozen stages. We create a sketch, add a solid operation, then create another sketch, add another operation, and so on. If, for example, the sketch in the early stages is not fully constrained, and we accidentally change the shape or position of such a sketch, it may affect subsequent stages of the project, and the entire project may simply be damaged. Therefore, let's strive from the beginning of learning the basics to aim at removing all degrees of freedom. In this case, we can remove these two degrees of freedom by applying certain constraints. We can either constrain this corner of the rectangle to this point, or we can place the rectangle symmetrically relative to the coordinate axis. We can do this in such a way that we first place this rectangle symmetrically relative to the y-axis. To do this, we select this point, select this point, and select the y-axis. Then we choose the symmetry constraint, and as you can see we already have only one degree of freedom. This rectangle is symmetrically placed relative to the y-axis. I cannot change the position of the rectangle by moving it left or right. I can change the position of this rectangle by moving it up and down. Here along this axis we already have a degree of freedom removed. Next we can apply the symmetry constraint between this point this point and the x-axis. We select these two points, select the x-axis and choose the symmetry constraint. As you can see the sketch changed color to green and we have information here that the sketch is fully constrained. Now I cannot change the dimensions or the position of this geometry because it is fully constrained and all degrees of freedom have been removed. This is exactly what we strive for, that the geometry in the sketch is green, meaning the geometry in the sketch is fully constrained. I'll show you an interesting fact. I will press Ctrl Z to undo these two constraints. OK. I can again freely change the position of the rectangle in the working area. We have two degrees of freedom. As for the symmetry constraint, we can apply this constraint, just like in this case, relative to the line, but we can also apply the symmetry constraint relative to a point. To do this, we select two points and then we select a third point relative to which we want to symmetrically position these points. The third geometry is like the axis of symmetry. In this case, this geometry relative to which we will symmetrically position the other two points will be the origin of the coordinate system. We select this corner of the rectangle, then select this corner of the rectangle, and as the last third point, we select the origin of the coordinate system. We choose the symmetry constraint, and now this rectangle has been placed symmetrically both relative to the y-axis and relative to the x-axis. We have a fully constrained sketch. We cannot freely change either the dimensions or the position of this geometry. This is what we strive for when creating 2D sketches on the basis of which we build a 3D model.